there are some people sort of making some sense through this. Actually, one of the guys making some sense through this is Glenn Greenwald. Now, Glenn Greenwald is a lefty. He is an Edward Snowden lefty. Glenn Greenwald and I used to fight on Twitter all the time. Glenn Greenwald has repeatedly called me racist. Uh, we've sort of made amends privately once about a year ago, so we don't go at each other anymore. But I have obvious pol political disagreements with him. It is what it is, that's fine. But I like to give credit where credit is due. Uh, and here he is on Fox talking about this issue that I'm mentioning about media resentment. You know, I think it's the same reason why you look at why they're so obsessed with Fox News, sort of the one place that has always existed in the large media ecosystem that deviates from what the rest of the media is typically saying. Like, why can't you have just one place where people are questioning your orthodoxies? And it's because the ability to control information is an incredibly powerful instrument that everyone who tries to obtain it wants to safeguard. And so what you see with Joe Rogan is he's built an enormous audience, bigger than essentially everybody on television, an audience that's young and ideologically diverse. And he does often question and dissent from the pieties they're attempting to implant in the minds of so many people. And as their ratings decline and their audience evaporates, they're looking to censorship as one of the ways to maintain this stranglehold on our discourse. There's a huge component of kind of resentment on the part of this insular class and liberal enclaves that nobody else is entitled to have influence. Yes, Glenn Greenwald, we're good to go, man. Uh, by the way, what's interesting at another level about that is he's on Fox saying that, okay? Now, as he makes the point, they're always trying to destroy Fox, right? Because Fox is the only counterplace. Fox, by the way, is the only network that will put me on. And they put me on completely uncensored. I do things live. They've never once asked me to say anything or not to say anything or anything else. Uh, when my first book came out a couple of years ago, we tried to get on every other network. Nobody put us on. Uh, it was a book defending liberalism, but actually they're anti-liberal. That's a whole other thing. But what's interesting about that is the guy that he's talking to right there is a guy by the name of Howard Kurtz. And you might find it interesting that Howard Kurtz used to be a host on a network called CNN. And do you know what show he used to host on CNN? It was a show called Reliable Sources. Yes, he was the host on CNN of Reliable Sources before Brian Stelter. It was a Sunday morning show and I remember watching it growing up and I thought it was really interesting because I've always been interested in media and he would do this honest assessment of media and critique of media and what are we doing wrong and sort of let's look in the mirror and figure out what's what. I don't remember exactly the controversy that got him fired from CNN, but then Fox News picked him up and there he is doing an honest assessment of the media with a guy, Glenn Greenwald, who is clearly not on the right, who is clearly not in agreement with most of the stuff that is said on Fox News, okay? But now it continues. Uh, Barry Weiss, who of course was the New York Times uh, op-ed person uh, who famously left the New York Times two years ago, uh, she defended uh, Joe Rogan, and obviously I've been somewhat critical of Barry. I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, but she wrote, ditto, this is a tweet from Barry Weiss, uh, this is a retweet of Lex Friedman, she wrote, ditto, grateful for Joe Rogan, and of course what Lex said was, I stand with Joe Rogan, it is not a coincidence that the attacks calling him racist come as pressure on Spotify to censor builds, politicians and the media profit on division and outrage, they fuel the extremes that make us believe we're divided, we're not, we're in this together. Uh, so my only, and I don't mean to be petty about this, but I do have to mention this Barry Weiss thing, because Barry, as you know, she wrote the original intellectual dark web piece in the New York Times where she said that if interviewers, she was talking about me and Joe Rogan specifically, if we talk to some of these scary people, and she was talking about Mike Cernovich, she was talking about Alex Jones and a few others, that we'd have to either be cynical or stupid. So she put that in the New York Times. She called me and Barry, I will talk directly to you and I've texted you, so I'm not talking shit behind your back. You called me the next day crying after the article came out, apologizing for putting it in there and said that your editors forced you to put it in there. So you were doing the same gatekeeping that now you don't want done. They're, they're forcing Joe Rogan to not talk to certain people. That's exactly what you did when you were at the New York Times. I don't mean to make this about you, but why not just admit that now? You're free and independent and on Substack. Why not just admit what you know to be true? I'm not making this up. So that's, that's just a little sidebar, and I apologize for even bringing myself into this at that level. Uh, Brett Weinstein, who of course has been on my show many times and who has survived uh, cancel culture and you know literally survived 
being at Evergreen State University when kids showed up with baseball bats. He had a good tweet about this. He said, Joe Rogan is taking flack because he's over the target. I support him for the very same reason. Every other person who understands the relationship between a free exchange of ideas and liberty supports him. Hashtag thanks, Joe Rogan. So of course, uh, Brett is right there and it is good to see. It is rare these days, but it is good to see some of the people that have been through the machine uh, not come out sucking up to the machine and, and you know standing up for what I know that they believe in. So props to Brett on that one.